So on the value chart from light to dark, each color has its own spot on the chart. And it's important to know where each color falls for its own values so that when you're painting, you're aware of all the value shifts that are occurring. So if you don't know, what you can do is you can make a chart like this, put it where you think the color might be, and then you can take um, a picture with your camera, which is on your phone, and you can then change it to desaturate it. You don't want to apply like a blue filter or red filter. You just want to desaturate the color out of it. And then you'll be able to see where in here your color goes. So, um, for example, dioxazine purple is so dark that when um, I use it, unless I have something to lighten it up, I, I can almost never tell that it's purple. And here, this sap green is darker in value than the ultramarine blue. So here we have cad yellow light, cad yellow deep, um, cadmium red medium, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and sap green. And so you can just make one of these charts for yourself and so that you're aware of how your paints are going to act on the value scale. Because color is going to get all the credit, but value is going to be doing the heavy lifting in your painting. So you want to make sure that your values are what you expect them to be. When you want to use your phone to desaturate a picture to see the values, what you do is you bring up your photo app, whatever app that might be, and you go into your photos that you've already taken. Then you will have an edit button and you select that. By the way, this cute little girl is my girl showing off her artwork at the local museum. She's in the membership show and she's just delighted. Um, so now we're going to come back over here and we're going to look for something on it that's not a filter. We don't want a filter. We want to go to this kind of more manual looking menu and we want to scroll over until we get to something that says saturation. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the bar over and just take all that color right out. Now we can see what the brightest brights are, the darkest darks, and everything in between. You do not want to use your filters because what they're gonna do is they're gonna filter out other colors which can change what kind of grayscale you have. And it's not going to be as accurate as going over to your saturation and just taking out the color. Here's a photograph of a chart of different greens I had been mixing. And so let's try this out with this chart. So what we're going to go down is to the edit button on my phone that looks like a little pencil over here. Tap on that. It's going to bring up my menu of my options. I'm going to look for my sunburst kind of icon here. Remember, we don't want filters because they added out colors. And I'm going to come over here and go to saturation. Now if I take out the saturation, we can see that there are a lot of different colors here that are all the same or extremely similar value. Down at the bottom, we see a very different value on that bottom line of colors, but at the top, they're really similar. So let's bring that back up to normal. So what do we notice? We notice that the yellows are lighter in value. On the bottom right, we can definitely feel that that green is really, really dark. Like that's not surprising that that's the darkest. But at the top where we have some yellow greens and some brown greens and some blue greens, it can feel a little surprising that they're really similar in values. 
So understanding this is essential because if you're working and you're putting all these beautiful greens into your work, but you don't have any value shifts, the work is going to look flat. It's not going to look strong and powerful. It's You're going to be putting all this time and effort into it. And then you're going to be like, what happened here? Why is this not packing a punch? If we come up to extremely saturated, we, we just see those colors pop, but it doesn't help us with the values. So here's regular, desaturated, regular. So if we come up to kind of a regular saturation here and we go over to filters, we can see, you know, as I scroll through here, look at all these crazy changes that are happening. This is why we don't want to use any kind of filters when we're taking pictures of our artwork. So here's grayscale. This should be as close to unsaturated, still true to the values as you can get. Here's classic. I don't know why, what the thing is on their classic. That's just some computer editor person making a decision that I don't know what they're doing. Um, so you just want to be careful when you're trying to use a filter to, to make these changes. And that's kind of the most common um, mistake I see a student making when I show them this trick is they'll go to they'll go to filters because they're used to doing that. They're used to just having that kind of shortcut, but just go through the manual program. And you know, iPhones are gonna be different, but they're not that different. I don't use an iPhone um, currently, and I've picked up students' iPhones and figured it out pretty easily. So if, if you have an iPhone and this isn't lining up, just go to a YouTube tutorial on how to do this and you'll, you'll find it out there someplace. But um, this should be able to help you get a really good view on what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to do this live with one of my paintings. So I'm going to take a picture of it. Then I'm going to go into my picture I took and I'm going to edit my photo. Now I'm going to come over here to the sunburst. I'm going to scroll to the saturation and I'm going to desaturate it. Okay. Let's crop this to just make it a little bit bigger. All right, and what we see is that this painting does have a full range of values. It has dark darks, it has light lights, and it has everything in between. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the real world. Here is the outside world. Take a photo. It's an overcast day. So what do we think we're gonna get? We don't have anything that is too extremely dark, dark and light, light. And we see that when we lower the saturations. We've desaturated all the color out of it. And now what we see is that the sky, of course, is much brighter than the trees. But the trees themselves just kind of become a mess of chaos. There is nothing really stunning and interesting. So if I were to go to paint this view, while it's really fun to stand here in my living room and look at it, it would not make a good painting. It would just be kind of flat and chaotic and boring and chaotic and boring at the same time is just not where you want to end up, right? Like that's, that's exactly the opposite of what we want to achieve as painters. So you want to make sure that you have a good range of contrast in your subject matter, that you have areas of contrast. So you want to have a light area or a dark area. And it doesn't have to be all the way dark. Impressionists are famous for staying high key, which means the light values, like kind of if you think of that value scale, medium to light, but they had areas of light and had areas of medium. 
so that your eye can rest. And we tend to try to do this with color and forget about the values. And so you want to remember that every single dab of paint you put on your canvas has a value associated with it. And this trick of using your camera is great because you can check in on yourself and your values as you go until you get used to just being able to do that in your own brain. So it's a really good trick for helping ourselves learn as we're painting. Please like and subscribe for more or visit my website at kristenonealart.com for online classes.